Let us begin with the modules on optoelectronics. Optoelectronics consists of two terms optics and electronics. As you know optics includes generation of light, detection of light and transmission of light as well. When you do these electronically then what comes is optoelectronics. There are number of optoelectronic components which are available. All of you are familiar with different displays, CRTs, some other electronic instruments where these optoelectronics is used. In optoelectronics we have components like light generators or emitters, detectors and this light is to be transmitted from source to destination. For that a special media is required. Optical fibers is the media which is made up of glass or say silica used to transmit this light. In this module we are going to just have the introduction of the these components which are optoelectronic components. First we will see some electromagnetic spectrum and why we can say that this optical fiber communication as such has infinite bandwidth. Then we are going to in, uh, introduce you about the light emitters, detectors, photo detectors etc. Fiber optic communication system, total system is also introduced here and some advances, some applications of optoelectronics are given in the last. Why optical fibers are necessary for transmission of light? what are their advantages, what are their applications, everything is discussed in this particular module. Learning outcome, to understand the concept of optoelectronics, to know about the electromagnetic spectrum, to get familiar with different optoelectronic devices, to get overview of the historical development of optoelectronic devices to understand advantages and disadvantages of using optical fibers, to know about the applications of optoelectronic devices, to know about future of optoelectronics which is integrated photonics. Electromagnetic spectrum Initially communication started at lower operating frequencies of about 30 megahertz. The bandwidth then required is also low. Since then the operating frequencies have drastically increased due to large requirements in the bandwidth. Now let us take a look into the electromagnetic spectrum in order to get an idea of our discussion. The medium of transmission that were used for operating frequencies up to 1 gigahertz were coaxial cables in which there was a center conductor surrounded by a layer of dielectric material and the dielectric material was surrounded by outer metallic layer. The electromagnetic energy traveled along the length of these cables and was confined in between two metallic layers. These cables had a loss figure of about 20 dB per kilometer. When operating frequencies increased further, the coaxial cables proved to be inadequate and lossy, thereby giving rise to the need of another medium called as waveguides. These are basically hollow structures which guide the electromagnetic energy from one point to another through them. But as the operating frequency is further increased to few hundreds of gigahertz, these waveguides too proved to be inadequate. As there was no supporting electronic circuitry available that could operate at such a high frequency. The reason behind this was that at such high frequencies, even the size of the electronic component started to show some variations in the circuit and the electronic component could no longer be treated as lump elements. Hence 
This led to a strong need of a search for other alternatives because though there seemed to have appeared a halt in the available technology, but there did not appear any halt in ever increasing demand for the bandwidth. Scientists all over the world started to explore new possibilities and looked in the optical domain which was already being used in the laboratory experiments. The idea was that if the already well established relationship between bandwidth and the operating frequency held good at optical frequency, then we would emerge with a new option for communication that would increase the existing bandwidth by 1000 to 10,000 times. Through investigations showed that optical domain had the potential to be used for communication. Two very obvious questions then come into mind that whether or not there are transmitters and receivers which are available for this new communication technology. And the second question is that to whether or not there exists such a wide band and lossless medium for carrying optical signal. Signal to noise ratio and bandwidth of the operation are two important factors which causes this increase in the frequency of operation. In other words, for a given input signal, if the medium has very low loss, then at the receiving end, the signal amplitude will be reasonably large and the signal to noise ratio will be large. The bandwidth requirement is also proportional to the number of users if all of them are using the voice information. Therefore, to have a reliable communication with a figure medium, sorry, therefore to have a reliable communication with large number of people which can send information from one point to another, we must have a medium which has low loss and large bandwidth. Therefore, one has to design the electrical circuit such that the quality factor of the electric circuit is practically independent of the frequency. The quality factor is proportional to center frequency or for a given quality factor, the bandwidth is proportional to center frequency. It was observed that in the optical window, one can get more bandwidth which is 10,000 times more than what microwave and millimeter wave circuits could provide. Hence, optical window was used for communication purpose. So basically, to use optical communication or the optical frequency as the medium for transporting information from one point to another. Glass is the medium through which light can be transmitted but has certain losses. This is due to impurities present in the glass. Thus, efforts were made to fabricate the glass with less number of impurities which definitely improve the performance that is less loss and have more bandwidth at the faster rate. Thus, the glass was molded in to form what are called as optical fibers which now can carry information over very very long distances. One has to look for light sources to be used to launch the light into the fiber so as to transmit the light over larger distances. LEDs and lasers are identified as those sources. Propagation of light through optical fiber can be well described by optical phenomena of total internal reflection. Structure of optical fiber, propagation of light through fiber, types of optical fibers and other phenomena associated with optical fiber is described in the coming sections. Optoelectronic devices Optoelectronic device find applications in industry, telecommunication, military, aerospace, etc. Optoelectronic devices produce electric energy when exposed to light. They use light in visible or infrared regions of electromagnetic spectrum. Solid state devices like light emitters, IR sensors, lasers, LEDs are used in optoelectronic applications. 
photo conductive devices such as photo resistors are widely used in counting systems twi light switches house security systems etc these detect variations in the light intensities and activate or deactivate the electronic circuits photodiodes and phototransistors are also in this particular category these utilize the reverse bias junctions for generating the current when illuminated photovoltaic devices produce a voltage when they are exposed to light the light energy produces a potential difference across the pn junction depending upon the intensity of the light solar cells and photovoltaic cells are widely used in various applications to generate electricity optical sources are generally light sources which emit light may be in visible region or infrared region electric bulbs incandescent lamps tube lights are well known sources of light if one uses one of these sources then some property of the light should change with the information this helps in carrying the information up to large distances intensity phase polarization etc are the parameters which are associated with the light source for optical communication one should choose the light source whose intensity varies exactly at the rate at which information is changing electric bulbs tube lights does not have such ability hence white light is the only option which has wider spectral width but operates at smaller frequencies coincidentally laser sources were invented during the same period which has smaller spectral bandwidth but operates at higher optical frequencies lasers happen to have sufficiently narrow spectral width and high beam directivity it is adequately used as optical signal sources so we can then had a compatibility of optical media like and optical sources initially laser diodes emitted light of wavelength of about 800 nanometers and so initial optical communication started with 800 nanometer wavelength due to which it was called the first optical window of optical communication the above discussion hence gives a very brief introduction to a very interesting and fascinating communication technology called as the optical communication another light source which can be used in optical communication is light emitting diode that is led it has wider spectral width but operates at optical frequency light detectors or photo detectors reverse bias pn junction when bombarded with photons produces more charge carriers it develops voltage which is a function of number of photons incident on it thus it acts as a photo detector quantum efficiency is the figure of merit for such a photo detector photovoltaic cell generates voltage when exposed to light solar cell is the example of such photovoltaic cell photoconductive cells cause changes in the electrical conductivity of the material when exposed to light light detector re resistor that is ldr is the example of photoconductive cell photodiodes are high impedance devices that are usually reverse biased for improved performance phototransistors employ the principle of photodiodes but with the amplifying action of the transistor which makes the device more sensitive historical review of optical fiber let us discuss and understand theory showing successive phases of fiber optic techniques development there are five generations which takes optical fiber to get it what it is now first generation optical fibers were used by american army in early 1970s this is for improving communication it was established by american army in fiber optics telephone line next in 
they developed their own fiber optic program known as the name airborne light optical fiber technology that is aloft in civilian applications they were used from 1977 when both AT&T and GTE installed fiber optic telephone system in Chicago and Boston first optical window of 850 nanometer with optical loss of about 4 db per kilometer and throughput below 50 mb per second utilizing the multimode step index fibers was used second generation it was started in 1987 when most of the companies moved their transmission to second optical window of 1310 nanometer and attenuation of about 0.5 db per kilometer with application of single mode fibers with close to zero dispersion third generation it was started in 1977 by nippon telegraph and telephone by utilizing the transmission in third window that is 1550 nanometer and it is developed in 1990s transmission in third window has low attenuation which greatly increases the range without regeneration the main disadvantage is high dispersion fourth generation it is used in the fourth optical window close to 1625 nanometer even though attenuation in the fourth window is comparable to that of the third window this considerably simplifies introduction of broadband optical amplifiers that is edfa and wavelength division multiplexing that is wdm fifth generation useful in soliton transmission which theoretically lead to indefinite increase in transfer capacity in 1990 bell labs sent 2.5 gb per second signal for the distance of 7500 km without regeneration the system utilized soliton laser and optical amplifier edfa in 1998 the same company sent 100 simultaneous signals each with a speed of 10 gb per second using wdm technique over 400 km thus total throughput reached is 10 12 12 bytes per second other records in fiber optic transmission development are from 1990 to 95 2.5 gb in single fiber one channel tdm 80 to 150 km without regeneration 1997 10 gb per second in single fiber single channel tdm then in september 2000 alcatel 5.12 tb per second october 2000 nec 6.4 tb per second for the distance of say 186 km in 2003 10.1 tb per second on the distance of 300 km and 5 tb per second in the range of 2000 km development stages of optical fiber in the first generation light source used is injection laser diode it is operated in the wavelength of 820 nanometer multimode fiber is used and the rate of transmission is 90 mb per second over 8 to 12 km and attenuation is 3 to 8 in db per km in the second generation the light source used is injection laser diode wavelength is 1300 nanometer single mode fiber is used transmission rate 565 mb per second over 45 km without repeaters attenuation less than 0.5 db per km in the third generation light source used is again injection laser diode wavelength now is 1550 nanometer single mode fiber is used 1.3 gb per second over 45 km is transmitted and attenuation is less than 0.3 db per km in the fourth generation light source used is injection laser diode wavelength is 1550 nanometer 
सिंगल मोड फाइबर यूज ट्रांसमिशन रेट टू जी बी पर सेकंड ओवर थर्टीन थर्टी किलोमीटर्स एंड अटेन्युएशन लेस देन पॉइंट टू डी बी पर किलोमीटर इन द फिफ्थ जनरेशन वेरी हाई बैंडविड कैपेबिलिटीज विच इज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ गीगा हर्ट्स फाइबर ऑप्टिक कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम एज वी नो ऑप्टिकल फाइबर्स आर यूज टू कम्युनिकेट लाइट फ्रॉम सोर्स टू डेस्टिनेशन बट स्टिल देर आर कॉम्पोनेंट्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड If you consider it as a communication system, whenever you say a communication system, there has to be a transmitter and a receiver. For fiber optic communication system, it is not a simple electrical communication system, but it is a optical communication system. So, what is required at the transmitter side is the source of light, and what is required at the detector side is conversion of this light into some electrical form. so if you consider the transmitter side then at the transmitter side there should be a light source this light source is electronically operated that is when you give some electrical signal then whatever is the source it should be on and off as per the requirement generally what is changed is the intensity of the light as per the information because whenever we say a communication system as such there has to be some modulation okay so whenever we consider a communication the intensity modulation is used whenever you consider a fiber optic communication system this is just general idea it is not specific depending upon the application where it is used it changes so the type of modulation changes as per the application so at the transmitter side there is a source now the source is such that it should be properly coupled with the optical fiber so if you consider number of sources like say bulb is there tungsten filament wire is there or say for example tube light is there so there are number of sources which are available but out of that we have to consider only that sources which can be properly coupled with the optical fiber and the two sources which are identified are the led that is light emitting diode and the laser so whenever we say a transmission sy- uh, system of optical fiber communication then the transmitter side generally consists of led or laser depending upon the requirement so at the transmitter side there is electrical to optical conversion so whenever we consider electrical to optical conversion so led must be there whose intensity is varying as per the information signal so information signal can be digital it can be analog so depending upon the application in which it is used this particular led or laser or whatever is the source of light that you are using it has to be properly coupled with the optical fiber this is because the say for example the diameter of the led or the laser it is of the order of say uh, in millimeters say hundreds of millimeters sometimes so and the optical fiber that you are using it is of the order of say few mm that say 1 mm or 2 mm like that so when you couple the optical fiber with such sources proper coupling mechanism is very much important so optical fiber communication system not only requires the sources but the proper coupling mechanism is also important so when the light is transmitted through the optical fiber now how the light is transmitted that is another section that we will discuss in the next module that is how the light is propagated through the optical fiber so when a light is propagated from source to say destination point there has to be conversion from optical to electronic now this optical to electronic conversion requires some component which is sensitive to light and not only sensitive to light but it has to convert it into some electrical form so generally photo transistors photo diodes say ldrs or apds all these are used in this particular case we will see them in detail in the successive modules but whenever we consider the fiber optic communication system what is required at the receiver side or the detector side is the photo transistor or photo detectors and then whatever signal that you get which can be in the form of say current or voltage or change in the resistance is has to be properly coupled and also conditioned electronically so that it can be displayed on say any display or it can be printed or scanned whatever it may be so this is in total fiber optic communication system advantages of optical fiber let us look into different advantages of using optical fiber in the communication system or in different applications 
द फर्स्ट एंड द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन और द एडवांटेज इज फॉर द अटेन्युएशन ऑप्टिकल फाइबर्स हैज लो अटेन्युएशन एज कंपेयर टू द कोएक्शियल केबल सो इन द डायग्राम यू कैन से दैट इफ द इनपुट सिग्नल इज गिवन फॉर द ऑप्टिकल फाइबर द आउटपुट इज ऑप्टेंड एज इट इज विदाउट एनी अटेन्युएशन अटेन्युएशन मीन डिक्रीज इन द एम्पलीट्यूड so no loss is there in the output for the optical fiber while if you consider the coaxial cable case then in that the output is slightly decreased so there is a loss the second advantage is smaller size and lighter weight so they are thinner they have very small diameters and therefore they are very thin and they also require less space If you compare them with the coaxial cables, then coaxial cables are comparatively larger, thicker, and they require more space also. And they are flexible. Optical fibers are flexible as compared to coaxial cables. Then they are immune to electromagnetic interference. Optical fibers are immune to electromagnetic interference. So, the there is no change in the output. even if there is a electromagnetic interference there is no physical electrical connection as there in the coaxial cable so no electrical connection is required and they are free from electrical wiring optical fibers are more reliable because they are immune to radiations or pollution etc there is no crosstalk so even if there are two optical fibers they lie near each other there is no crosstalk the one signal is not mixed with the other like in the coaxial cables or telephone lines it has wider bandwidth as compared to the coaxial cable ideally if you consider the optical fiber it is having infinite bandwidth as compared to the coaxial cables isolation coating is not required and the data transmission rate is very high compared to coaxial cables it is more economical no emi and rfi disturbances so they does not affect other systems which is nearby to them they require less number of repeaters that is for long distance transmission optical fiber does not require repeaters while in case of coaxial cables number of repeaters are required easy and plenty availability of raw material the raw material that is used in the optical fiber is silica or glass which is readily available disadvantages of optical fiber higher cost of optical fiber compared to copper cable or coaxial cable proper couplers are necessary at transmit and receiver side and of course the installation cost is also more application of opto electronics as you know opto electronic consist of the light sources like lasers or leds let us see what are the applications of laser if you consider the laser as argon fluoride the type of the laser is excimer laser having wavelength of 193 nanometer and it is used in eye surgery krypton fluoride is also excimer laser having wavelength of 248 nanometer used in eye surgery diode lasers which are called semiconductor lasers operates on the wavelength of 630 to 680 nanometer it is used in laser pointers low power applications laser printers cd players etc helium neon which is green in color is a gas laser it is having the wavelength 543 nanometer which is in the visible region and has number of uses helium neon red 633 nanometer wavelength has several uses rhodamin 6g organic which is a dye laser wavelength 570 to 650 nanometer and used in tunable over broad frequency range ruby laser is a solid state laser 694 wavelength 
ND YAG solid state laser used in different applications and has the wavelength of 1064 nanometer. CO2 is a gas laser and it is used in cutting the hard material like steel. It has the wavelength of 1060 nanometer. It has some applications in medicines as well. Say site correction surgery, removes scars resulting from acne, accidents, burning scars. The laser performs a local abrasion which restores the skin. Lasers can also be used to remove tattoos. Laser skin resurfacing using either the CO2 or erbium laser is one of the latest development in the war against wrinkles. Endoscopy. So, these are the different applications in medicines. Let us go to the applications in communications. CDs and DVDs can store large amount of information. Nowadays, they are commonly used to store data, music, films or computer software. They are cheap to produce and to retrieve the information stored as bumps in CD. All you need is a CD drive or player. Laser printers, the core component of this system is a photoreceptor which has the form of rotating cylinder and it is made up of photoconductive material. Some other applications of optoelectronics that they are always preferred as waveguides for networking purpose because of the cost effectiveness, optical fibers are immune to electrical interference, so they can be used in noisy or harsh environments. They are lightweight and they consume less space as compared to the other links. Now what is the future of optoelectronics? In future, this optoelectronic can be used as a high speed long haul trunks with higher bit rates which is of the order of say several gigabytes per second. It can be used for extension of LAN to broadband integrated devices. Distance can be increased between the repeaters for long haul links, interconnection of supercomputer networks, in telesurgery also it can be used. Then video on demand that is CATV, telelearning, video conferencing, optical amplification, photonic switching, cable TV networks. One of the most important thing which is associated with the optoelectronics which we call as the future of optoelectronics is integrated photonics. So in integrated photonics there are ICs which we consider as the optical ICs. We know that integrated circuit uses resistors, transistors, MOSFETs etc which is of the order of say micro size or nano size. In this the connectivity between the components is through the electrons or current you can say uh, between the components of the devices which are fabricated on a single chip. However, number of efforts are made to increase the speed of processing. This is done either by reducing the size of the device or by doing or using different techniques. But can we think that we cannot reduce the size of this particular IC beyond the size of a nucleus or an electron. Hence the idea is to use the light to communicate between these devices instead of using the electrons or the current. This will definitely increase the speed of operation because all of you are familiar that the speed of light is of the order of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So, it is the fastest that is available in the world. In order to have such communication, the devices should be modified and instead of using electronic circuit, one has to go for the waveguides. So, there are different types of waveguides which are used to construct these devices and in order to implement the functionality similar to the electronic devices. All these optical devices along with the connecting wires in the form of waveguides which are fabricated in the form of a circuit on a single chip. This is integrated photonic circuit or photonic ICs. There are number of applications of photonic integrated circuits in the area of optical fiber communication through 
there are other fields like biomedical applications, optical computing, etc. The arrayed waveguide grating AWG, which is commonly used as optical demultiplexers, then WDM, that is wavelength division multiplexed optical fiber communication system, is also an example of photonic integrated circuit. Another example of photonic integrated chip in wide use today is the fiber optic communication system is the EML that is externally modulated laser which combines the distributed feedback laser diode with electro absorption modulator on a single chip. And let us summarize this module now. Up till now what you have seen is introduction of optoelectronics in which what is there in this particular course in optoelectronics what we are going to study in this everything is explained in brief then the electromagnetic spectrum is explained in detail which section of that particular spectrum is used in optical fiber communication system is explained something related to the bandwidth why it has infinite bandwidth or high quality factor that is also explained in detail then the optical fiber which is the main thing in the communication system of say light communication system if you consider it is explained why one has to use optical fiber its advantages like it has lightweight then easy to install immunity to EMI and RFI etc economical more economical as compared to other systems of communication say for example telephone communication or say coaxial communication everything is explained here then why we have to consider the different advantages and disadvantages of optical fiber applications like in eye surgery or say any number of applications are there of optical fibers optoelectronic components like light emitting diodes and lasers photoelectronic components like phototransistors photodiodes optical fibers everything is explained in detail here and one of the most thing that what are the advances of this optoelectronic systems what is the upcoming field in which one can go and study further do some research work or go to industry for that that is the photonic ICs that are also explained in detail in this particular it is basically introduced this is everything is introduction so everything is introduced here the successive modules will have the detailed explanation of all the things which are mentioned in this module so if you study it properly then you will definitely find that the successive modules have some link with the previous modules. So try to understand this that in this particular module everything is only introduced. So if you want to really find the details of all the modules which are all the things which are there mentioned uh, in this particular module then you have to go for the successive modules depending upon your requirement. Thank you very much.